the unbearable weight of massive talent, something I suffer with. Now, before I talk about the film, I just want to say I will be introducing a new rating score when I'm talking about films and TV shows. I will still be using the number out of 10 to give it a score, but I'm also going to consider the rewatchability of the film. I know that isn't a word. This will basically incorporate the factor of how watchable a movie is, you know, how likely am I to rewatch the movie, which is what takes a movie from a movie to a favourite movie. You know, I may give a movie a 10 out of 10, but I may not want to rewatch it. It may not be that sort of film, but there may be an 8 out of 10 or even a 7 out of 10 that I rewatch every year. I've given a lot of films I've seen at the cinema since I've been reviewing films on the channel a 9 out of 10 but I've never actually watched them again but they were they were they were good films they were pretty great films but they're not the sort of thing I would ever rewatch now the rankings for this will be rewatch at cinema and at home annually so that's the sort of thing it's so good you have to go back to the cinema to watch it again on the big screen and then you continue to watch it at home regularly because it's such a good movie then it will just be rewatch at home annually you know it's not specific to the time frame every 365 days you watch it but you're gonna watch it around once a year maybe more because it's good but it's not worth returning to the cinema you got rewatch occasionally you know time to time maybe every two three years you pop it on you feel like watching it then we've got if it's on late night tv and there's nothing else really to watch i'll watch it and then we have i never want to see it again ever it's that bad like the last jedi now onto the movie itself the unbearable weight of massive talent this stars nicholas cage and he's playing himself of course as an actor and he can't get roles anymore but then a lucrative offer of one million dollars comes in for him to attend the birthday party of this fella called javi gutierrez javi gutierrez turns out to be a super super fan of uh, nicholas cage and he invites him to his very nice estate on the island of Mallorca, and Javi is played by Pedro Pascal. Now Cage takes up the offer and him and Javi form a very nice friendship and it seems to be going perfect before the CIA intervene telling Cage that Javi is a criminal and they want Cage's help to, to stop him. Now this movie is a bit of a trip, it's pretty crazy, it's pretty wild and it's quite self-aware as well throughout and it is pretty funny at times. It, it's, it's a very enjoyable watch. It kind of feels like a buddy cop movie in a sense, obviously it's not about cops but it's just about these two guys that end up being buddies and they're in this sort of wild scenario but it's also got some family drama thrown in there along with some action. The best part of this movie though was the bromance between Nicolas Cage and Javi Gutierrez. I loved their their bromance i love their friendship in this you just you really want them to both be friends it feels like it's what you know both people have really been wanting they've needed someone like that in their life pedro pascal is super likable in this movie as well of course he's likable in in everything we all love pedro in whatever he's done narcos game of thrones star wars but for me he was the standout in this movie even though the movie is about nick cage playing himself of course it, it's who it's about but Pedro was just the standout for me. Nicolas Cage in this, he's not the best person for his family, he's kind of self-centered, but the plot of course takes him on a journey that allows him to grow as a person. And the plot was pretty crazy at times, it stayed interesting throughout. There isn't really any particular point apart from near the end where it's uh, uninteresting. You know, it is, it's interesting throughout, you know, it doesn't really get too boring or drag at any point. But the best parts of this film, as I said before, were the comedy elements, the stuff between Cage and Harvey those were the the standout parts of this movie they had some really funny dialogue and really funny situations like there's a part where they both take LSD and they are just it's just hilarious it was really funny the situations they get themselves in the paranoia it was a really great segment of the movie and probably my favorite unfortunately though the film wasn't perfect there was some comedy that just doesn't land that was mostly from particular characters and there were some characters in this that I wasn't just I just wasn't a huge fan of such as the character of Cage's ex-wife. I don't know, she just she just didn't really do much here. She I didn't really see the point of her. I didn't find any of her dialogue particularly funny. I didn't find her likable. You know, she wasn't like you hated her, but I just I didn't think she added anything to this movie. They also have this thing where Nicolas Cage talks to like a younger version of himself. I'm I'm not up to date on like Nicolas Cage's um entire filmography i've only seen bits and bobs of his um so i don't know if this is like a particular character from a particular movie and that's why it's funny this little thing they do where he talks to his former self or like a former character of his that he's played i didn't find it that funny i thought it was kind of weird for the sake of being weird it didn't really land for me but maybe it's a reference that i haven't got 
and you know if you've seen whatever that is from if it's from something maybe that's what makes it funnier as i said earlier the film is kind of playing that buddy cop comedy sort of vibe you know for a majority of the movie that's where it's going but it does opt to do an action ending which you kind of see more often in these comedy movies nowadays they like to just throw in like an action ending that's meant to be kind of high intensity but honestly it's kind of the same mind numbing action we've seen in like a hundred times before car chases dramatic music guns firing and no real likelihood that something surprising will happen in this action sequence to finish the movie off. The first two acts were telling a more character-driven story, but then they opt for the action ending, but that, that's the thing with this film. It's so self-aware that it kind of actually references this and almost sets it up, you know? It, it, it is very self-aware, so they can almost get away with it, but I still wish they hadn't gone for that particular way of rounding off the movie. I think a little bit of action when it first started off was good, but then it just kind of got to like a crazy stage, and I think they could have should have kept it on sort of the low scale minimal style but it is what it is this was a pretty unique movie at times but at other times not so much the start and the end of the movie were the weakest parts i would say and there's like some shaky comedy in between you know some shaky characters in between but for the most part this is a very solid movie a very funny movie and the heart of it is this relationship between nicholas cage and Javi Gutierrez. I really liked their friendship. I really liked the bromance. I really liked their story. It was funny. It was goofy. It was ridiculous, but I really did enjoy that and it gave me some laughs. I would give this movie a 7 out of 10. And as for the rewatchability rating, I would say if this came on late night TV and there was nothing else to watch, I would give it a watch again. Thank you for watching. I've been Joe Squared. If you've seen this movie, let me know what you think about it and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.